Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate Apple's liquid glass effects using Elementor, whether the free version or the pro version. As you can see in the background here, you can see the smooth liquid glass effects here. So um, before I begin, you can get this code on my website. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Um, so you can also, I also broke down the explanation here in case you can't follow the video. So you can just come here then look through it and um, recreate the effects. So let's start with the effects. So um, the imp most important thing for you to know is for this effect, you're going to need three containers. You're going to need the main container, secondary container, and the child container. For if we come back here now, so we're just going to recreate the um, container. So we're going to add uh, what would be our primary container. Then we want to come back here. Then we include the secondary container. For the secondary container, I'm just going to give this. I'm not going to do anything here. Actually, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove the padding. You understand? So when I come back here, I'm going to insert the child container into it. So we come back to the um, main container here. When we come back to the main container, you don't have to customize it the way I'm doing this. You can, you can even create your cards. You understand? However, you want to. Um, create your cards or your menu or wherever I want to use the liquid glass effects. But I'm just doing this so that I can show you the full effect of the flow. You understand? So I'm going to make these, um, let's say like 980 pixel so that we can scroll there. Then if we come here, we're going to um, consolidate that with a top of 450. We're going to also add bottom of 450. For the right part, then we're going to put 50 for the left we put 50, you understand? So we come back to the child container. Actually, for easy um, recognition, let's name this. I always name my name my containers. So um, I'm just going to name this child. So for easy um, to be able, so now we are in the child container. We're just going to put this on. So let's use 500 for that. We have 500 there, then you want to center the content here. So the next thing you want to do is you come to the website here, then you come to the secondary class here, then you copy the um, the secondary container, then you copy the class. Then once you come back here, click on the secondary container, you go to advanced. When you get to advanced, you scroll down to CSS class, then you put the code there. Um, you come to the child container, you come back to your um, to the website, you copy the code, you go back there, then you go to advanced again, you put your CSS class, you understand? So when you're done with this, before you do anything else, let's um, actually um, style our cards. So let's add our um, adding the text and a button. So let's so let's remove those. Let's add our text again. Then you come back. Um, let's add our button. So yes, we have those um, those elements in the right container now. So what you want to do is if you don't want your button to be like this, you understand, you can actually style it however you want. You can do whatever you want. But for this tutorial, we're going to remove the um, default background here. So let's come to styles. Then for the text color, let's just change the text color to something dark. For background color, we're going to take the transparency down to zero. You understand so you can see the liquid um, glass effects so now from here what you want to do is ordinarily if you were using if you're using elementor pro you come down to custom css here then you paste your css code so but still for the svg you're still going to use the html widgets so let's just go ahead and use the html widgets so you drag your html widgets anywhere on the um on the anywhere in your container here. So let's just drag it here. Now we'll go to the website and copy the 
um, the widget code. So when you copy that, you're just going to put this in inside the HTML widget. Oh yeah, before I forget, um, sh shout out to Lucas Romero. Uh, he actually made this um, this SVG code here easy because I, I got stuck at the point. By the way, you can recreate this SVG um, this SVG code. You can recreate it on this website here. I'm going to also leave the link in the description if you want to do that. So basically, what you need the most is this Gaussian um, Gaussian blur, uh, the displacement map, um, turbulence, and image. You understand? So you can recreate the um, the effect however you want. But um, this guy made it a bit easy because I got stuck and I saw his video and it actually shared a lot of insight into that. So thank you for that, Lucas Romero. Um, so you're going to paste this here. So when you do that, what you want to do now is let's um, now copy our CSS code. So if you come back to the website, you scroll down, you see the CSS code, you copy it. So in the HTML widgets, what you want to do is you come to HTML widgets here, then you um, put this also anywhere on the website, you understand? So um, you paste the CSS code. So as you can see, you can't really see the effects. This is because I missed the step, you understand? So what you want to do is you come back to the main container here. Let's name this main as well. You come back to the main container. So you go to styles, we should, we need to give it um, a background. You can use um, either a background color or whatever it is you want to use. But I found out that it looks way better when it's a background than a background color. If it's a plain background like this, you want to play around with the blur and things like that. But it's more straightforward when you use a normal background, you understand? So um, we come to our website here. I'm going to choose this mountain range picture. I also found out that it works better when your background has this, um, when it's, um, how do I describe it? When it is calm, you understand? Look at this um, gradient colors here. Now they are very bright, you understand? It still works, but it doesn't look as good as when the background is still calm like this and it has like that um, dark overlay feel, you understand? So I'm just going to click on this mountain range picture. I'm going to put this there. So I want to um, change the display size to cover. Then let's just put repeat on no repeats for attachments. We're going to click on fixed. You understand? So as you can see, you can already see that effect here now. So if we try and preview this, so if you preview this, you can already see that effect. You can see it there. So um, the only other thing to do here now is you want to style what you've created. You understand? So you can come here, give this um, a border radius of 16. You can even give it a little bit of background things. So we would say, let's choose blue. You understand? You say, let's choose blue. For example, you can give it a background tint, tint however it is you want to, but I'm not, but now I'm not a fan of all that. I prefer to just use blur here. So if we check this now, you can see it's uh, it looks way better. This outside, um, this border radius here that is not changing is from, I think it's from the secondary container. So if we come to the secondary container here, you can also um, you change the border as well to 16. So you can see that it disappears. Yeah. So one um, important thing to notice, you can see the button here has not changed. That is because the button also has its own CSS class. So let me see if I added the button CSS class here. Okay, I didn't, but by the time you see this video, you, the CSS class will be there for the button. So if we come back to the CSS code here, if you scroll down, you're going to see the code for the button here. Yeah. So I'm just going to click the CSS class for the button come to the button here and click it. Once you, once you click it, you go to advanced. Once you go to advanced, you're going to come to CSS class here, then add your code. Voila, you can see the um, the um, liquid glass effects for the button as well. 
So for the for the code, I also in on my website, I also explained, I also broke down what each of the code look what uh, it uh, it stands for and how you can customize it. You understand, so you can come here, retreat, so you can know what to customize in the code to to improve the effects. For example, if we come to our code here. Um, I really don't think you should really play around with much of all this, but if you want to change, really change the displacements, the um, liquid glass effects, if you scroll down here to the displacement map, um, you can see the scale here. You can play with the scale however you want. If I put it on 170, you can see the displacement is really high. So if I put it on something like 30, it's, it's very small, very subtle. So usually I've been playing around with between 30 and 70. So for the purpose of this um, this tutorial, I'm going to leave it on um, 70. So for the CSS as well, one important thing to note here is you see this height here. Whatever height that you use for your child container here, whatever height you use for your child container here, you need to include it in this you need to change it here in this height section for the liquid glass elements um css here the reason why you're doing that is if you put this at zero the reason why you're doing that is if if we if we remove this let's remove this entirely you now you understand it's going to extend the um it will extend the container so you have like um like the like uh, what's it called so you have a, like an overflow of the container beneath it you understand so that's why you need to change the heights here to whatever heights you use for a child container so all this as well you can also customize this as well all, everything here as well also as i mentioned the breakdown is here so that you understand what it is you are customizing so if you want to change the blog, which I think most people would be uh, most in interested in for accessibility. So if we scroll down, we're going to see, um, we're going to see where the background filter blur is. You understand, this is it. I used one um, pixel because it's, it's, uh, it's works for me, to be honest. So, but you can change, it changes to like five. You can see it looks more like, um, there's more blood there but i think this takes away the um meaning of liquid glass effect so you can play around this with this as well again it depends on the type of website that you're creating so you can leave this as three leave this as two you can even increase it however you want to increase it you understand so you can do all those then um what else can you customize here so for the button as well you can also play around with the background filter for the button so if you for the but let's put this as maybe five for the button you can see it increases it increases the um the blow for the button as well so let's make this five as well so basically that's um, those are the customizations that you can do and <laughs> you should do to be honest because um, as I said, websites are different. What you want to do on your websites may be different from what I want to do on mine. So um, basically, that is that about the um, liquid glass effect, and this is how you can recreate this. So one thing I should mention is this effect, the liquid glass effect does not work on Firefox. So um, I think it's some limitations from Firefox. It doesn't work, but the, but the um, glass morphism works. You understand the... Um, the effect does not work, but the liquid glass field works on Firefox. So yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you very much.